Uh, leading the league with some information about some activity on the free agent market yesterday. And look, the, the deal that the Red Sox announced with Rafael Devers isn't the one Red Sox fans were hoping for, but they did agree on an arbitration figure with their all-star third baseman. Tell us about it. Yeah, I got some heat on Twitter yesterday from people after tweeting out something that started with the Red Sox and Rafael Devers have agreed. It wasn't the deal that fans were hoping for, but they did settle on a contract for 2023. I think 17. It 17.5 million dollars to avoid salary arbitration. Now, why does this matter? Because at least there's not one more thing that won't be causing animosity between the two sides as they work towards a potential extension. Remember, a year ago, the Yankees and Aaron Judge could not come to an agreement on, on a salary for 2023, and they exchanged figures and they were going to a hearing. They wound up settling right before the hearing, like literally within an hour before the hearing was set to begin. But we know that when teams and players go to arbitration, it does cause a lot of animosity. You've got the team in the hearing telling the player why he's not worth the money he thinks he is, and those hard feelings linger, especially when the player is headed towards free agency. So if nothing else, this is one less obstacle in the way of a potential extension. My understanding is the two sides are still pretty far apart on that potential extension, but talks will continue, I'm sure, at least through opening day. Tell you what, with the craziness that went on this winter, he might have gained himself $100 million sitting around. Yeah, without having I, to play. I think you're right. I think he's... I mean, it's that's that, crazy. He's in that $300 million range for sure. Uh, and when you look at his age, he's, what, about 26, I think? Yeah. And, and you know, the fact that he's going to be a free agent at an age younger than all of the guys who were out there this year, uh, there's no reason to think that he is yeah. not going to land at so least... So when you hear they're, they're, they're wide, ways apart, well, yeah, it continues to get wider. As guys kept signing, he kept sitting and going... Man, my price tag's you know, going up. Price went up for him with all these deals, I agree. Uh, also, a one-year deal to report uh, for Dominic Smith, who'll be joining the Washington Nationals this year. Yeah, you know, the Nationals have slowly been trying to piece together their roster for this year. Dominic Smith coming off some disappointing seasons the last year and a half with the Mets. Uh, but we know this guy has talent. He can hit uh, $2 million, $2 million more in potential incentives. He'll be the starting first baseman in Washington. Uh, and, I, you know, certainly knows the team. Mets fans immediately started placing over-unders on how many game-winning hits against the Mets he'll have this year. Uh, but, you know, I like the deal for Washington. Certainly a low-risk, potentially high-reward type of a deal. He's such an easy guy to root for. Uh, um, and I want to see what 600 plate appearances looks like for Dom Smith. And I hope he gets to hit against left-handed pitching. I hope he has a full complement of plate appearances this year. Because, as you can tell, uh, in only one of the last three years, and again, 2020 was a COVID-shortened year, but he had a big year then. Didn't have a lot of plate activity last year. Hoping for a full season for yeah. him this year in D.C. I'd like to see him get that, too. That's awesome.